During the First World War, there was one infamous propaganda story that emerged amongst the British and Canadian forces about a soldier who was brutally executed by the Germans. The story of a young Canadian soldier who had allegedly been crucified by the enemy shocked many within the Allied powers, and it told of the barbarism and brutality of the enemy. It portrayed the Germans as bloodthirsty and savage beasts who would maim and kill their enemy with unnecessary cruelty. Today we look at the horrific execution of the crucified soldier, debating what actually occurred on the Western Front, and who was the fateful soldier that was allegedly executed in such horrific fashion. Remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. As the First World War took hold over Europe, propaganda was used in a number of different ways to help the war effort. It was a powerful tool for recruitment, and getting thousands of men to sign up to take part in the British Army for example. However one story that emerged in the early stages of World War I came from within the men who fought on the Western Front. During a retreat from Le Cateau in August 1914, rumours began to emerge about the German army and the brutality of the enemy. A rumour came around that the German army had crucified a member of the British Expeditionary Force, however this was never confirmed. The British media tended to ignore this at the time, and wrote about other German atrocities to convince the British public that the war that was being fought was a just one against an evil enemy. However, on the 10th of May 1915, an atrocity was reported by the Times newspaper under the title, Torture of a Canadian Soldier, written with information emerging from its Paris correspondent. The piece stated that Canadian soldiers who had been wounded at Ypres had told that one of their senior officers had been crucified against a wall. He had been captured by the enemy, and then pinned up on the wall with bayonets, thrust through his hands and feet, before he had a bayonet driven through his throat, and he was then shot at for target practice, and was riddled with bullets. The soldiers stated that this had been seen by the Royal Dublin Fusiliers, and the story emerged from this group. Private George Barry reported that, on the 24th day of April at Saint-Julien, I saw a small group of Germans about 50 yards away. I was horrified to see that a man in a British uniform was literally crucified, being fastened to a post by eight bayonets. He was suspended about 18 inches from the ground, the bayonets driven through his legs, shoulders, throat and testicles. The story was investigated two days after publication, and the Under Secretary of State for War was asked about it and he discussed that the government had no such information as to the atrocity having been committed, and were yet to find out any information about a crucified soldier or a Canadian officer. Inquiries were then made about it. The story also reached the Toronto Star, who published an interview with a British Red Cross medic. He told how a captain of the 5th Canadian Battalion had told him before he died of his wounds that he had personally seen a Canadian sergeant being crucified in France. It was also said that the captain declared that he, a medical officer, Major and others, signed sworn statements that they had witnessed the killing of this soldier. They said that the Canadian sergeant was tied up by the arms and legs to a tree and was stabbed 60 times by German bayonets. It was also reported in other newspapers that wounded Canadians are all certain that the enemy is particularly vindictive towards them, as the Germans have been furious that the Canadians did not stay in Canada and instead helped the British. The Canadians all firmly believe that a soldier was crucified. But what actually happened? Was it all just propaganda? The Times later then published a letter five days after the initial story broke, confirming that the crucified soldier was in fact a sergeant, and it also stated that the victim had been found fixed to a wooden fence of a farm building. It was said that the soldier had also many stab wounds to his body, with bayonets securing him to a fence, and it also introduced the possibility that the soldier could have been dead before he was crucified, with the ordeal being performed posthumously. The speculation intensified, and on the 19th of May the question once again emerged in the House of Commons, asking whether there was any truth or not to the crucifixion of a soldier, or whether in fact more information emerged about another incident where Canadian soldiers retook a position filled with injured servicemen, and then they found all of the wounded who had been executed by bayonets by the Germans. 
it was clear that stories of atrocities committed against British and Canadian troops were emerging, but no official details emerged about either story. British soldiers and officers in France conducted inquiries and more substantial investigations took place. Colonel Ernest J. Chambers, the Canadian chief censor, began to look at the story of the crucified soldier. He searched for eyewitnesses and found one who swore he had not just seen one, but three Canadian soldiers bayoneted to the door of a barn, three miles from Saint-Julien. Testimony was also obtained from two English soldiers, who claimed that they saw the dead body of a Canadian suspended from a barn door with bayonets, but this was later debated. The story of the crucified soldier emerged as headline news all around the world. There were different variations of the story that emerged, but the most common held the thread that the Germans captured a Canadian soldier alive and using their bayonets crucified him onto a barn door, and some alleged witnesses also stated that they placed the victim onto a wooden cross near to Sanctuary Wood, near to Weep. In some accounts, the nationality of the soldier was missed out. One particular account taken from a Canadian soldier states how he helped to take down the body of the crucified soldier and confirmed he was a sergeant, but also added that he was from the medical service and possibly from Brantford, a city in Ontario. He gave the name as Sergeant Thomas Elliot, however Sergeant Elliot then wrote to his local priest, confirming he was not involved. But who was the crucified soldier? For years the story was investigated, but in the 21st century evidence came to light that stated that the story of the crucified soldier could be in fact true. A British documentary filmmaker uncovered information and evidence that pointed towards a soldier being Sergeant Harry Band of the Central Ontario Regiment of the Canadian Infantry. Band was reported as missing in action near to Weep, on the 24th of April 1915, close to when the story of the crucified soldier emerged. Other soldiers in his unit then wrote to Band's sister to express their sympathies, and one of them later confirmed to her that Band had in fact been the crucified soldier. His body was never recovered, and he is commemorated on the Menin Gate. This evidence has been disputed, and contains allegedly a typewritten note from a British nurse that states Band was crucified after a battle at Ypres, on one of the doors of a barn, with five bayonets in him. The story of the crucified soldier is still debated today, however if true it's most likely that this occurred. Following the fighting near to Ypres, the Germans captured a Canadian sergeant, or recovered the body of a Canadian soldier near to the battlefield. As a symbol of German strength, aggression and defiance against the Allied powers, they then crucified the soldier dead or alive, onto the door of the barn. This would have had an immense effect on the Allies, British and Canadians, and would have been incredibly shocking to see. War crimes were common during the First World War, as were atrocities, so this sort of thing could have occurred rather easily. The main aim of the crucified soldier was to shock, and that's certainly what happened when the story reached the world's press. The event was depicted in a statue known as Canada's Golgotha, referring to the story of Christ, showing the Canadian soldier crucified on a barn, surrounded by baiting and jeering Germans. The sculpture caused controversy, and the Germans formally requested that it be taken from public view and display, as they denied that the story took place, but Canada stated that they had sufficient evidence that the crucifixion was in fact true. The issue with the story of the execution of the crucified soldier is that no conclusive proof has been found that points towards a crucifixion having occurred. There was no body with the wounds matching the injuries sustained with this sort of action, for example, holes in the hands, feet or so on found. But then again, still today there are bodies being discovered from the intense fighting on the Western Front. Still today trenches are being discovered, but one day the story of the crucified soldier may be finally put to rest. There are still so many untold stories of the First World War, but the legacy of the conflict will never be forgotten. Neither will the devotion and dedication that those who gave their lives for their countries be ever lost. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.